Hi, everyone. I'm Tasuke Sato, NIA from Japan, and uh, this is a joint work with Ryosuke Kojima from Kyoto University, Japan. And the title is Boolean Network Learning in Vector Spaces for Genome Wide Network Analysis. Yeah. And let me begin by background. Uh, we have been working on logical reasoning in vector spaces, aiming at scalability and robustness. We already have published some papers on semantics, deduction, abduction, and so on. This time, I'm going to talk about the scalable learning of Boolean networks in vector spaces. Uh, Boolean networks are a model of gene regulatory networks proposed many years ago and uh, in which genes have a state zero, inactive state, and a state one, active state. They are controlling each other. And the Boolean networks describe the state of transition of genes by Boolean functions. And the next state of gene I is determined by uh, Boolean function fi applied to the current state of gene 1 to gn. Uh, there are several types of Boolean networks, but we choose the simplest one, synchronous, fully observable uh, Boolean networks. And uh, you can see this. Uh, this here is a small example of Boolean network consisting of three genes, g1, g2, and g3. And the next state of G1 is determined at the conjunction of G2 and G3 at the current state. The next state of G2 is determined at the not G3 at the current state. Uh, so these formulas are called trans, uh, transition formulas. Then these uh, transition formulas generate a sequence of uh, state transitions like this, 111, 101, 001, and so on. Now think of learning. Uh, learning Boolean networks means learning a lot of Boolean functions or Boolean formulas, but uh, bo learning Boolean function is intractable in general. So we restrict uh, Boolean, uh, networks to and or Boolean networks that only contain conjunctions and disjunctions. So our task is, is that uh, given a, a sequence of observed state transition, S1, S2, S3, and so on, we learn a transition formula, Fi, that being a conjunction or disjunction for each gene i such that uh, the transition formulas are uh, reproduced, observed uh, state transition sequence. And so given the left hand side, we learn the right hand side. That's our task. However, what we actually want to do is learn and or Boolean networks in vector spaces by cost minimization. To do so, we encode an and Boolean network by a pair of uh, binary matrix Q and uh, integer threshold vector theta. Uh, look at G1. Then G1 had uh, G1 has G2 and G3 as its transition formula. So we put one here and here corresponding to these uh, literals. And we also set theta one to two, this number means a number of literals to be true uh, for the transition formula to be true because there are two goals to be true. So we set two at theta one. Uh, likewise, uh, D2, the, uh, the next of D2 is a negation of D3. So we put one here, correspond to negative literal D3. Also, theta two is set to one because there is only one uh, negative literal here. Uh, suppose uh, we observed uh, we observed a sequence of state transitions S one, S two, S three, and S four. 
like this. So we construct two binary matrices, S in and S out, like this. Also, we introduce the dualized S in, defined like this. Now, we can prove that if an Andor Boolean network represented uh, by uh, the pair of Q and theta gives actually the observed sequence of state transition, then Q and theta, theta satisfy this equation, matrix equation, and vice versa. Uh, using this fact, uh, we learn, we learn uh, given S in, S in, S in and S out, we learn Q binary Q and binary theta, uh, integer theta by minimizing continuous cost functions Ji and uh, Ji or for each Gi defined below to zero. And these uh, cost function looks a bit complicated, but uh, they have clear meaning. First, they are non-negative. And fan J I and for example, it's zero, then each term is zero. And for example, the third term is zero. That means uh, B I is binary uh, vector. And for example, this term means that fan uh, J and uh, cut function J and is zero, then the conjunction bi for the gin gi is false at state j if and only if the this, this element of gi is zero. Likewise, the conjunction bi is true at the state j if and only if the this element of gi is a one. In this way, we can learn, uh, given uh, s in and s out, we can learn uh, Q and theta representing uh, and or Boolean network. So here is our learning algorithm, but uh, let me skip this. And uh, like I say, the detail described in our uh, paper. And now we conduct learning experiment with noiseless data and noisy data. And we first create a random and or Boolean network with a network size n varying from 1,000 to 5,000. And uh, we let it generate a sequence of state transitions of length 100. And we learn, then we then learn an and Boolean network from uh, such artificially generated state sequences and measure learning time. Uh, this graph shows uh, learning time versus uh, network size n. As you can see, uh, noiseless case uh, in, the, in two cases, noiseless and the noisy case. Uh, in both cases, the learning time draw a uh, quadratic curve, which coincides with the fact that our learning algorithm, algorithm learns in order n square. And also note that when noise is zero, our learning is perfect, no error. Even if there is 10% noise, that means our state bit is flipped with probability being 0 0.1. Still, learning error is so small, uh, one pass, 1.3 percent for n uh, being equal to 5,000, for example. We also compare our system with the existing uh, Boolean learning system, uh, best fit and reveal, but uh, uh, they are intended for learning general Boolean networks. And so naturally they take much longer time than our learning algorithms. Our learning algorithms is specialized for and or Boolean networks. And finally, uh, we uh, conduct learning experiment with real data. We prepared gene exposition data containing uh, uh, 10,928 label genes. Actually, 
uh, the uh, messenger RNAs, but uh, please allow me to use them interchangeably for intuitiveness. Anyway, we have 41 data points and we learn a binary matrix Q of size 11,000 uh, by 80 from 40 state transitions represented by a pair of binary uh, matrices S in and S word of size 11,000 by 40. And the learning result is here. We achieved, for example, 87.3% uh, uh, approximately or learning error for the first data set, but uh, it took uh, more than a day. And anyway, so we uh, achieved 87.3% uh, for the first data and 80% for the second data. We consider these learning uh, accuracies are rather reasonable uh, because, uh, like I say, our data is rather noisy and actually uh, more than 90% of state transition is non-deterministic. So there are still remain two problems. The first one is low prediction accuracy, it, which is 41.2% uh, for the first data by four forward cross validation. The second is two long, long, long disjunction conjunctions. And, but uh, they can be solved by introducing two operations. The first one is considering the length of, possibly considering the length of and was to four or less. The second one is relying. By introducing two additional operations, we can achieve prediction accuracy, for example, 84 84.3% uh, for the second data, almost doubled by this uh, improvement. And also, furthermore, we plan acceptable and worse that only make uh, only at most one error in a fold or in the four fold cross validation. And uh, we obtained uh, 600, 6,000 and Average 6,600 such acceptable and worse. That means uh, there are, there are 6,600 genes whose next state is predicted by these uh, short and words with uh, more than with accuracy, prediction accuracy 95%. I think these uh, numbers are rather high. So summary, we reformulate uh, learning, uh, learning and library networks in vector spaces. We learn them by minimizing cost function to zero using a Newton's method, which learns in order n uh, squared. And we applied our approach to real data, general uh, genome-wide gene data containing more than uh, 10,000 genes and obtained small and accurate and words that can predict the next state of uh, next state of, of more than six and six uh, six thousand genes with uh, prediction accuracy ninety five percent on average. So future work obviously includes an extension to general Boolean formulas. Thank you very much for your attention.